what they said. Coming up in today's show, Naomi's wifey Lifey and her advice on dating again post-breakup. I give my take on how I'm finding the world of dating apps and Lou's dating diary. We ask our question of the week. Why is dating so damn hard, especially when you have kids, a career, and if you're like me, need time to watch true crime? We talk star signs and what it's really like to date someone born under the star sign of Libra. Are we really that balanced? Plus, what everyone really hasn't been waiting for. We try our hand at matchmaking and let you know how how you can be a one of our perfect match couples and enjoy a free date at Bella Vista Hotel. All that and much, much more in today's show. Welcome to the show. I'm Louise. I'm Naomi. We'll be talking all things dating, relationships, post separation stuff. And uh, hopefully, we'll be giving you some advice and laughs along the way. <laughs> How did this start? You started this group uh, called Sydney Friends on Facebook, and it's grown to be such a you know, massive community. And I think you were one of our founding, founding members. Oh, I was a founding member. Um, and we were on um, different platforms or different Facebook groups. And then I found that there was a quite a connection with a lot of men and women in the group. And there was a lot of people tapping away their responses and joking <laughs> online and stuff like that. And then I changed it and I set up Sydney Friends and we set up a couple of events so that people can get out behind the... Uh, get out. From behind the, the screen. computer, yeah. yeah, and then meet people in real life. We started doing um, some events, and we had Bond Night where we got dressed up. Oh, that was awesome! Yeah, James yes. Bond, you know, and the women got to be all the leading ladies in Bond girls. Bond girls, yep. And we had a couple of fancy dress. We since then we've done quite a few events where it's it's adults only karaoke. Sometimes it's uh, biking day events with kids. Yeah, something for everyone. And I guess that's how it all started. Yes. And we were having a chat about something, and I tagged. <laughs> You and I said, we should do a podcast. And I said, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> and then before you know it, um, I drafted some ideas and then you went behind the scene and got everybody else involved. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, with this podcast, what we're hoping to do is share our experiences, being in a relationship, dating, making new friends in the minefield that is being over 40. Yeah, and it's it's essentially our friendship too yes. in the last couple of years. And we've been through up and downs. We have. And uh, uh, reconnected at different times and sharing those funny stories. It's just two friends chatting. Absolutely. And we want to hear your funny stories too. And hopefully it resonates to you guys also. <laughs> Wifey, lifey. So, wifey, lifey? Wifey, lifey. Or lifey, wifey? Lifey, wifey. <laughs> being, <laughs> being in a partnership. I mean, how, look. I know that you've, um, it's, it's, as we said earlier, it's, it's really hard going back into a relationship after such a long term relationship. How has that kind of transition been? You know, the interesting thing, I met my husband back in 2000 online and it was the revolutionary thing at the time. Wow. <laughs> I was the first, one of the few people to experiment. Um, that ended after 17 years. And so, you know, after that, people go, oh, go back on Tinder, you know. That yeah, was it's the first. always Tinder. Tinder is it? the first, it's almost like the first like. point of call. That's where I would normally say people go for their new stock. <laughs> <laughs> new stock. So um, I went on to Tinder and, you know, like, an, and uh, it wasn't until. How I was, did you find Tinder though? Look, I think at that time for me, well, it was a bit of a culture shock. Now, sometimes, imagine. you know, like for, considering that I had dipped my toe into online dating back in 2000 and then revisited again in 2017, it was a bit of a shock. There was a lot of language that I didn't know, like ONS and oh, okay. FWB and all these terminologies. So I think that's something we will discuss in a couple of yeah. later episodes. But. <laughs> Yeah, look, it was very, very different. And for me, like I, I'm a full-time mum, so it was the most efficient way of meeting people. And I didn't go on there purposely looking for the next one. Yeah. But it was more to learn a little bit more about myself, I guess. Yeah. I know that, that like the landscapes changed so much. I mean, the transition of going from a long-term relationship into being a single person person again and yeah as you mentioned having kids um it's it's a massive kind of as you said you said it perfectly culture shock 
No, it is. Yeah, like uh, you know, da- the last time I dated was in my twenties. So I was young. I was free. Yeah. You know, if you said let's go to the movies, uh, you could. Whereas now in your forties, you probably go let's go to the movies if I can organize a swap or a babysitting or make sure that they're okay. <laughs> so <laughs> it's not like. I'll meet you at the movies or I'll meet you at the club. You're partnered up now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've been with my partner now for, oh gosh, nearly two (laughs) years, I think. Um, Things are moving along quite well. You know, we've, um, he's got children, I've got children. So it's been progressing really, really well. We've learned a lot about each other, I guess, and how we navigate this moving forward. There's no manual. Mm, Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. I think that's important as well. But things have been positive and that's really, really good. So I just wanted to use this opportunity, I guess, to discuss about what I learned about myself and the journey. Um, hopefully some good advice. I'm I think, sure I think nice. you've got to be ready as well. Like, it, I think, yeah, you can use um, these dating sites and, and going out there, et cetera, to, you know, find out who you are. But you, I think you have to be ready for it as well. Oh, like, totally, you know? totally. Your priorities definitely change in your 40s compared to your 20s. Um, 20s, uh, I think people look for partners and who they want to have take with them on their journey. And it's to a certain extent, it's very similar in your 40s, but you're looking almost at somebody who can complement what you offer. So it's not about, you know, Jerry Maguire movie, you complete me. Um, Bridget Jones, I'm more Bridget Jones. (laughs) But, um, yeah, so it's not about completing me or... Or Or completing them. Yeah, and I'm not looking at having, uh, you know, father from children or anything. Like, I don't plan on having any more kids. Mm. So, yeah, our, our priorities definitely change. Blue's Dating Diary. As I've alluded to earlier, yes, I have started dating again after being in a long term relationship and man is it a minefield. I mean, it's like what you said earlier, Naomi. Um going back into that mind frame is it's, it's a culture shock. I mean, it's not just a culture shock. It's just literally, it's, it's, it's so changed. You go from ha- being in a relationship and you're sitting there watching TV and true crime <laughs> and, uh, and then suddenly you're sort of by yourself again and you just feel, you just feel like, Oh, hang on a minute. <laughs> What's going on? It's not just, it's not that I need someone to make me whole. It's just that I, I'm just used to having somebody there to sort of like, you know, annoy. <laughs> or you know, or bounce off. <laughs> download at the end of the day, right? Exactly. Just yeah. having somebody listen and and say, Lou, how was your day? Yeah, exactly. At I the think. moment, I've got two dogs and they don't really do anything. Well, they don't talk back too. Nah. So that's, you know. that could be a good thing. So sometimes, I mean, so this dating <laughs> landscape that I currently have, I mean, look, if you want to follow more closely on my really sad dating life, then obviously go on to Sydney Friends where I journal this. Um, dear dating diary. Yeah, dear dating diary. And it's, you know, look, it's interesting. I mean, the, the, the dating apps that I'm currently on is our old faithful Tinder, um, Bumble, Yep. And hinge, and I mean the, the 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 differences that I found between all three of them is Tinder, as you said earlier, is the one where you kind of go and potentially maybe just want to you know have fun, go out. It's not nothing too serious. Even though, to be fair, I did meet my ex on Tinder. We were together for a while. Look, there's always some good stories from Tinder, and I did meet some very um, decent men on Tinder, and it, not everybody was out there, you know, for a one night stand mm. or anything like that. Yeah, but um, yeah, I guess it's sort of like the first point of call. A lot of people go in. It's just everyone knows Tinder, isn't it? Oh, I think it was. Yeah, it's just one of those that it does get a bad rap every now and I then, so. and every now and then we hear about it in the news and stuff like that. But I found it. You know, it is probably just as good as any other app. Exactly. Look, I personally found it, and I am finding it <laughs> a okay. Actually, it's, it's not that bad. I think. Um, I think it all depends on what you write on your profile. But look, we'll we'll get into we'll delve more into that 
later. Um, and then there's Bumble. Yes. And Bumble, Bumble's good. Bumble's all right, especially if you're, you know, as you all probably know what Bumble entails, the woman makes the first move first. Yeah. So you have to go in there with some witty kind of intro. And and for the people who've never been on dating apps before, um, yeah, well, you know, like some people um, haven't. Um, with all the dating apps, you normally swipe right to if you like the look of somebody and like what they actually present in their profile, and you swipe left if you um, don't like them. <laughs> and next, please. Um, and once you do match, so in Tinder, when you both swipe right, it, it there is a little bit of a You've matched. Yeah, you've things. matched. But anyone can, like, yeah, and so then, can... Yeah, and so then anybody can actually initiate the conversation, whereas in Bumble the difference is you both match and it's the ladies who actually have to make um, the first move. Yeah. And, uh, and there's a timer thing. On yes, there. it's 24 hours. That's I find that it's a bit stressful. You know, yeah, it's really stressful because you're like, hang on a minute, you, you just you, you match and then something may come up. I mean, like Naomi, I have... Well, I have a child. I don't have children. I have a child um, and two dogs. Um, and sometimes, you know, life gets in the way and you're just like, what? And then you've got to come with a really good intro. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like know, not just, hi, how are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you do have to come up with something witty of, of a time, you know. Yeah. Like, I usually, not I usually, I used to. <laughs> Uh, I'm not on dating apps anymore. <laughs> so um, I used to look at their profile and read what's on there and try and come up with something witty to start conversation. Mm, yeah. Um, and then once you do, they also have 24 hours to respond. I mean, my opening gambit usually on, on Bumble, yeah, as you say, I look at their profile, see if there's something there that I can, you know, say as an, as an intro. If they're wearing a hat, Usually, I'd be like, "That's a cool hat. Can I borrow it?" Oh, and, okay. Yeah. Yeah, and that not, generally... not do you drive a Volvo? No, because I don't <laughs> drive. So, but that's another story. Or I tell them a joke, and my favourite go-to joke is, um, "What do you call cheese that isn't yours?" Oh God, I hate. <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> Nacho cheese. Oh God, I know it's sad. It works. You know, oh, it works. I think humour. <laughs> Humour always plays a really good part in dating apps because it really gives people an indication of how the conversation's going to go. Yeah, absolutely. And they're also, you know, they usually go, huh? <laughs> <laughs> the joke went over their head. Yeah, exactly. And it makes them want to um, talk to you. Yeah, so it's really good rapport with humour. The other dating app, Hinge, have you used that? I have used Hinge and Hinge to me seems like that's where people tend to go to when they really want something serious. Yeah, I found that too and like, I think that that's where I met my partner too. There you go. See, case in point, so it I works. Think, yeah, because <laughs> Tinder, um, Tinder is probably first point of call. Mm-hmm. Um, people just have to load up profiles, no, no effort necessary, is just swipe right, left. Bumble, you... Women make the effort and they're like thinking to themselves, look, I'm always making the effort. Why am I making the effort again? Yeah, that's right. So then the next part is um, Hinge. And so, and, and with Hinge, it's quite good in the sense that it does have little prompts. So there's a, a little voice thing that you can actually record your voice and what you're passionate about. Yeah. And there's talking points with the pictures as well, right? There is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That usually can help generate conversation. Mm. And most of the people there do say, you know, long term, not just... I don't know. (laughs) I don't know what I'm looking for at the moment or something casual. And I'm just like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you find that on Hinge a lot of people put more than one profile picture. Yeah. Um, And that's something that we want to touch on a little bit later about how to present your dating profile. Yeah, stay tuned for that. That's coming up in another episode. Yeah, stay tuned. And then ask me about... Yeah, it's got... It's it's like little these little prompts. Yeah, look, there's something kind of more, dare I say it, mature... Yeah, it does encourage more serious um, contestants, I guess. Mm. Is that the best word (laughs) to use? Contestants (laughs) or uh, potential partners. And so it does attract the more serious kind. Then there's, you know, there's so many. There's um, Zeusk. Yeah, there's Zeusk. Yeah, Zeusk. uh, Look, I maybe looked at that for about all of five seconds and I was just like confused. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I was just like, what? And, and e- eHarmony was just like, I just did not like eHarmony. No, I didn't like that either. I think I had a look at it. Didn't like that. They just ask you a load of questions, 
But look, part of it is there has to be some initial attraction in there, like a picture. And but with eHarmony, they tend to match you with what you like, which is, in fairness, what we're gonna be doing. Later. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we love eHarmony. <laughs> Question of the week. Why is dating so hard? Why is dating so hard, Lou? <laughs> I like how you asked me that. Now. Why is dating so hard? Okay, I can only give my experience for me right now. I think it's kind of timing. Yep. Um, I, I'm naturally very, very busy. I, I have a very busy career. I have a son who I love very much. I have two dogs that drive me nuts. And obviously, I've got a, quite a full on social life as well. And I think it's kind of making that all align. And then there's my personality as well. I, I love as I said earlier, watching true crime and debating, etc. And I think there's some men out there who kind of see all that and there's still a kind of perception of that they want someone who is a bit more traditional. Mm. Um, you know, somebody who would be at home at a certain time, you know, has a dinner, etc. which is fine, which, you know what, I, I would love to be that person, but at the moment I, I can't be that person because yeah. of my, um, you know, my duties and what I have going on in my life. I guess as you get older, most people are in partner- partnerships already. Yep. Mm. Um, so it is kind of finding that, you know, that one person who that aligns themselves to you and, and, and that you find kind of that commonality and that common ground yeah i think that that's that's really um you know as we get a little bit older we know a little bit more about ourselves as well so yeah. we know what it is that we like and what we don't like yeah yeah I, I think we don't settle for anything less i think by that point especially if you've had relationships previously right you're like okay and, my and non-negotiables just, this is i'm oh, not yeah. doing that and we just don't have time yeah you know like like you said um a lot of us have actually got kids got um, social lives, got work, and so we we tend to cull a little bit faster too, yeah. you know. Um, <laughs> um, and then there's, you know, once you do have children, we do have to be quite sensitive uh, with their ages, you know, like um, having older kids and and also younger ones, and there's sensitivities around that. Yeah, and they have to understand, as as we do as well. It's not just oh, the man has to understand. We have to understand as well that like they may have. Um, complexities or or other kind of things that they have going on in their life and and that ha- and we have to align to them as well it has to be balanced mm. right so it's not just me sitting there going they don't fit in my life no we have to fit into each other's yeah lives. so you know like the biggest thing for separated mums and dads is that um, people's weekends don't necessarily align and sometimes that could be a huge factor Especially because, if you've got custody. Oh yeah, 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 and and so if you if they don't align, you naturally won't be able to meet on the regular time. So you're really having to juggle the weeknight dates, and that's always um, hard after work and so forth. And once you do have kids, their needs come first. So it's it's not about just oh yeah, like I said before earlier in the segment. I think you can't just drop everything and say hey oh do you want to go to a movie tonight and yeah let's go do it yeah there has to be some planning yeah, yeah and and you can't just sort of like oh yeah let's get away this weekend oh, hang on a minute i've got saturday <laughs> sports i've got sunday sports swimming dancing football what have you and then especially if you have the kids full time i mean i'm lucky i, I mean i have 50 50 custody with my ex who i'm still really good mates with and you know sometimes we do s- switch days and weeks and and stuff and we're very very close and we're we're still good mates i'm lucky in that sense but there's people out there who aren't who don't have that yeah 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 so i've got my kids um 100 of the time and that was a little bit tricky in the beginning when the kids were a lot younger of course um you can't just leave them and so you do have to find babysitters or rely on family to uh look after the kids so that's um yeah that's that's always hard and so the I guess the biggest thing is that in the 40s, you do require a little bit more flexibility, a little bit more understanding on the other side as well. Yeah, no, way before I think it goes back to, you know, that initial attraction. And I think as I've gotten older, I do have zero tolerance. I won't like just, you know, see how it would go, et cetera. I think there has to be an initial kind of feeling that, you know, this person is someone that I can see that I can, you know, that I want as part of my life I, you know it's I think 
I hate to say it. It's not like, but we don't have that much time. <laughs> uh, I'd rather, you know, I wish we could go back to the days where it's kind of like, you know, you meet someone in a bar and whatever, you get to talk and you're with your mates and what have you. And, and then you can fast forward and you're already sat at home watching true crime. <laughs> you know, it's forget that all easy, that. Hey? Yeah, it's not that easy. Forget all that, you know, all that stuff. In between. In between, that, that initial kind of swipe right, swipe left, going on that awkward first date. Um, yeah, I wish there was a way you can just like remove all that. Have a fast forward button. Yeah, exactly. But like I've, I found that dating wasn't just about finding another person, but it was a lot about learning about myself and finding myself again as well. Mm. You know, because um, for 17 years, I guess I was a wife. I was a mum. Yeah. Oh, I'm still a mum. Yeah, so <laughs> I'm still a mum. Sorry, kids. Yeah. <laughs> so it was it was more as a unit or as a partnership and then all of a sudden I'm on my own again. I'm still a mum but I'm doing a lot of things and then finding yourself again can be, for some people it does take a little bit longer Yeah. and um, and some some people do need to do some inner work. and um, That's important. Yeah. You know, because there's some people who just want, they just want to be in a relationship, right? And it's kind of like, well, you, you got to do the work. Have you done the work first? Have you found, as you said, yeah. yourself? Yeah, yeah. Like, do you understand yourself? Do you, you know, are you ready? Yep. And it's, it's about not repeating those same mistakes as well. Bingo. So, you know, what you've sort of like thought that you wanted in your 20s is not exactly what you want yeah. in your 40s. Because we evolve, things change. Things yeah. happen. I'm, I'm not the twenty year old. Oh, I'm like, we know. don't want to be. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we're a lot wiser. Uh, absolutely, I think we, I, yeah. we make different mistakes. Yeah, <laughs> boy, do we make different mistakes. <laughs> and sometimes it's funny mistakes as well. Yeah, things that we probably don't tell our kids, but you know, it's part of learning and part of evolving. They might find out listening oh, to yeah. the podcast. <laughs> Oh, yeah, no, de- most definitely. And we'll delve um, into some of those things a little bit later. What are people's goals and five-year plan, 10-year plan? What? All that. <laughs> what? I have a plan. You know, I have what? A plan. <laughs> you know well, you don't have those when you're in your 40s, isn't it? No, nah, it's true. Look, uh, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, we don't have that, you know, I, I mean, I know I'm not having any more kids so it's not like that oh I've got a biological clock ticking so yeah. my motive I guess dating in my 40s would be totally different dating in my 20s because I always wanted a family yeah so it was it was more looking for an ideal partner or you know somebody to have kids with and that sort of changes star-crossed lovers Right, so now we're going to do something a little bit more fun and we're going to talk about um, star signs and the spotlight this month is Libra because, believe it or not, myself and Naomi are both Librans. Librans, right? So who better to talk about the greatness and, you know, how fab Librans are? And I'm not talking about librarians, I'm talking about Librans. So, yeah, I mean, look, I'm a Libran and I like to think that I'm quite artistic, creative, love music. Um, we're ruled by the goddess of love herself, Venus. Venus. Yeah. You see? Yeah. <laughs> and, um, you know, so, you know, I think we're very harmonious. We're very loving people, um, nurturing people. Well balanced. Very balanced. Or, very balanced. You know, if you're not, if you're a Libran and you're not balanced, then wow okay <laughs> then we have to go and find your balance um but yeah but we're very fair um diplomatic um so if you're going to be dating a libran usually libran's they go for people um who are quite in- you know have that intellect they're quite you know somebody who you can really talk about politics debates and we're very sort of that kind of um we love the brain Mentally sparring. Yes. yes. I like that. You yeah. Know, being able to talk about – and the thing is it's not about book smart. No. So we're not looking after, you know, like we're not looking for PhDs. Or, I, I mean, am. that would be okay. <laughs> you can. Um, but, you know, and and I think that's one thing that people forget. It's like, oh, you know, intelligence. But it's, it's finding um, somebody who you can – like who is mentally stimulating for yes. you. Yes. Yeah. And it could be in the field of their work or oh. it could be <laughs> like Mr. Sky. <laughs> um, yeah, no, you're right. It can, you know, it can, they can be the polar opposite of you, but if they kind of spark something in you 
um, and they offer a difference of opinion. Yeah, I and think. sort of like be challenging mentally for us. I think that that's where um, if you don't get mentally challenged, then it, it becomes a little bit boring. I think that's the most important takeaway from this is, yeah, have something – you know something cool to say something not necessarily it doesn't necessarily have to be intelligent but something to back it up with mm. you know something that would you know spark our interests and um you know have a difference it could be a difference of opinion but as long as you kind of like say hey this is what i think is you know my opinion and this is why it's like oh i, I usually was take a step back and go why me i didn't know that yeah yeah well we're both liberals so we must be experts in liberals, right <laughs> we like to think so um okay so a Libra man is usually charismatic, charming, and flirtatious. He's really He really likes to make you feel like you're the centre of the universe, whether you've just met or have been dating for years. He's funny, smart, and always knows just the right thing to say. What do wow. you think? Um, look, I will add something to that. So I know some Libra men, and most of them are, yeah, obviously charming, like we're charming. Um, <laughs> but they also have a really snazzy dress sense as well. They like they like their fashion, Libra men. In terms of Libra women, we're, yeah, we are very nurturing people, very balanced. It does say we are the most intelligent. Yeah, oh, look at that. Yeah, I, <laughs> hey, I have to agree with that. We are the most intelligent. And one thing that we do like is, um, yeah, being mentally stimulated as well. Yep, charming and friendly women of the Zodiac. See, and I believe that. Look at us with Sydney friends. She embraces elegance and femininity. I have, have to. I said, have I too many eyes in there, but also has a wild side. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she's an intellectual who is also a romantic idealistic. Okay, that's that's me all over. I, I am a typical Libra, and I do seem to think so. Mm. <laughs> I, I mean, agree with that. We do, and we do get along and with a lot of people, and uh, must say that we are quite well balanced. You and I. Yeah, are we? <laughs> <laughs> it's debatable, isn't it? <laughs> See, look, I completely agree with that. And I'm not just saying that because it all sounds really, really good there. Right? Um, but it's 100% up. It's, exactly. It's, you know what, as a, as a Libra, and I do like people very kind of, um, I wouldn't, look, intelligence is, you can't really say intelligent. Well, I mean, what is intelligence? But someone who can, yeah, stimulate me mentally. Yep. So get your minds out the gutter there, right? Stimulates me mentally. <laughs> um, you know, someone that you can like bounce ideas up with and, and also even if you've got a, a difference of opinion, as long as you can back it up and, and kind, kind of, you know, I can learn something new, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like so really quite like learn to how to debate certain topics. Love a debate. Like yep. uh, should pineapple belong in pizza? Yep. No. Yes. <laughs> what does that No. <laughs> <laughs> And, you know, no. Yes. And, and um, you know, and uh, as Naomi said earlier, I reckon, you know, are we balanced? Totally. Mm, what? <laughs> <laughs> Unhinged? Unbalanced? I don't know. You be the judge of that. <laughs> I think the later episodes will reveal that. Exactly. And, and uh, people can judge for themselves. But in the meantime, we're balanced. Okay. <laughs> Perfect match. So uh, we've used Sydney Friends as our first uh, guinea pigs, I guess. Is that what we call it? <laughs> well, victims. Victims. <laughs> um, we sent out a, a questionnaire earlier this week and we were calling for volunteers of people who actually wanted to dip their toe back into dating. And would somehow trust us in the process to match them. I and mean, what are you thinking? Oh no, we had some really scientific questions out yeah, there. Yeah, we did actually to to narrow the field. Mm -hmm. um, We're not going to tell you what those are. No, <laughs> those, those questions. Unless you actually want to participate, you'll never know what the questions are. Yes, and uh, we got a good response though. Huge response actually from our group. So. Um, we wanted to thank uh, and uh, respect or thank the people for their bravery. Yeah, for their bravery and also, you know, I can't believe that you actually, you know, want to go for But hey, and we'd also like to thank Bella Vista Hotel also where the dates will be taking place. They're going to shout each lucky couple a drink each as well as a appetizer to share. And uh, I can smell some good food out there. You know what? This is our home now for the foreseeable um and uh, yeah so bella vista hotel thank you so much for sponsoring our perfect match segment as well as uh making us at home here yep 
So uh, let's see how our dates go. We've pulled a name out of uh, the first couple. And so uh, Lou will be contacting one. Um, Am I contacting the man or the woman? We'll flip for it. Well, <laughs> <laughs> um, and I'll contact the other, and they'll find out on the actual day um, who their date will be. Uh, they'll enjoy a drink and an appetizer to share, and uh, the following week we'll get some feedback on how the date went. And yeah, they'll be coming back, telling us, uh, you know, first impressions, you know, what they spoke about, and also would they get, would they see each other again? Yeah, it's always, you never know. We're really grateful that our members have actually jumped on this opportunity. And, uh, and it, look, if it doesn't work out, it's a good opportunity to explore about other members in the group and about ourselves and what we would probably do differently next time. So, And you get a free paid first date. I mean, hello. Don't get better than that. Nah, of course not. So if you actually search for Sydney Friends with a Z because the S was actually already taken. Well, but uh, <laughs> Sydney Friends with a Z. Um, you can find us on Instagram and Facebook. Brill. So, uh, yeah, looking forward to that next week. And that's the end of our show, our first show. Oh, I can't believe how quickly that was. <laughs> Did you know? <laughs> it was, we'll, sh- we'll release the bloopers later. Oh, uh, absolutely. Look, and but we had an awesome time. Yeah, look, it's a great. I once again would like to thank Bella Vista Hotel um, for their fabulous uh, podcast studio that is going to be our, the home for what they said, this, we- uh, this podcast. And, uh, yeah, and we look forward to being in the next uh, episode. I mean, what's the next episode looks like? The next episode, we're actually going to be exploring red flags and green flags. Oh, yeah, that's going to be a topic and a half, isn't yep. it? So it's not a circus, <laughs> it's uh, not. but uh, we will be exploring uh, red flags and green flags. And you'll be, again, talking about your experiences being, you know, your wifey lifey. My wifey lifey, but not really, but sort of, <laughs> but um, yes. Um, and then you'll be talking about Lou's dating adventures or yeah, the adventures. dating ad- diary. And my God, do I have a diary for you and all that and more for next week. So stay tuned. and Oh, and we find out what happens to the per- our perfect match couple. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I want to say that all the time. Oh, perfect, perfect match. match there, was, there was a show in the 80s called Perfect Match in Australia. We're not going to get sued, are we? I hope not. <laughs> Um, but we might uh, – they used to have a robot on there called Dexter and they once people did match, they gave a percentage rating of compatibility. Okay, that's just too much work it's, for us. It, yeah, it, it's and like, we don't you know, have that technology no, yet. No. So, But if we were, we are looking for any AI sponsors. <laughs> <laughs> look, but look, come back to our next episode uh, where we'll, we'll there'll be that and more. And we hope you enjoy it. And uh, it's a goodbye from me. Goodbye from me as well. And we'll catch up with you soon. Bye. Recorded at the Hills Podcast and Video Room located at Bella Vista Hotel. Editing by Chris Waluski. Music by Danny Muller. Content written and produced by Naomi Chow and Louise Palmer.